welcome back everybody today today is mixed media um thursday uh tuesday we did this in the watercolor tuesday and today i would like to do just put my chat up here so i can see anybody uh, today, uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of a haul, art haul, that I just got delivered. And it's for the gel plate. That's one thing I forgot to get out. So, uh, many, many, many years ago, <laughs> um, I did play with some printing ink. Um, now this, the ink that I have uh, ordered and received is the same as what I used 45 years ago, 45 plus years ago in uh, art school. But it's supposedly a better ink for toxicity There's um, and drying doesn't take as long to dry and uh, it prints more detail. So if any of you have ever printed with printing ink on a plate, um, either dry point um, printing or lithograph, that type of thing, um, you'll know how ink uh, adheres to your printing um, plate so nicely, but it's put on a little differently, but it does give a beautiful detail to your work. So I thought I would try this. This is, um, you may know it, it's been out for a while, but I didn't have any. And I did get some plants to experiment with. So, um, here's my box. I haven't even opened it yet. So I'll just open it on the side here because it's kind of big. Uh, knife. And I uh, bought this off of Jackson's Art Supply. And you, anyone can order from them. They do have fantastic prices. Um, Canada has a, a Canadian website you can order from, or you can order straight from the UK. You always have to save these. Now, I got a starter kit, and I also got two jars of another color. So this is the ink, Akua ink and it is a soy based oil paint and it's um, cleanup is with soap and water so it kind of reminds me of the um, water soluble oil paints but this is a printing ink and speedball actually owns it now um, when i knew it it wasn't speedball <laughs> but i guess they took it oh geez have a leak. Um, well, black leaked a little bit. And this is the starter kit, which is very economical to buy. Um, it gives you assortment of what they have to offer in this uh, range. And a little, little bit goes a long way. Um, you can get hmm, how many? Quite a few colors in the line. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26 colors in the line, roughly. And they also have liquid pigment that you can buy. 
So if you wanted to make your own colors, and they're also they also have a um, this is the is that the one or no? I think this one is yeah. Ugh. Uh, baby wipes. We get a baby wipe. They also have the uh, medium to mix it. And I'm not worried about, um, this is, can be um, washed up with soap and water. So, see, this is just a baby wipe and it cleans right off. We'll just have to get into the crevices later. So get most of that off. But, um, yeah, that was, was not on tight enough. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about this ink and why it's so different than your typical inks. And I'm, I'm not like experienced with it. So if I miss something, um, I recommend looking it up on the internet or um, Speedball site. They have some videos about it on there. Um, but a little bit goes a long way, like I said. So, <laughs> uh, thanks. It's not. Hi, Kathy. Good to see you. Hope you're feeling better. I nearly, nearly canceled today. I was up most of the night with a headache. Sinus headaches. I hate them. But I feel better now. Took some medication. And... This is a real mess. Now, uh, you can use it with a roller as your, um, you don't need a, a printing press per se. You could also use a really heavy duty marble um, rolling pin that you can get. Uh, or you, they have the steel rollers you can buy, too, if you want to do that. Or you could put it through, I've heard people put it through their spaghetti press. Or um, your embossing machine probably would work also. Um, but they also use it on the jelly plate. Um it says for mono printing, ghost prints, high shine for a cool metallic. They also have metallics. Um, there, there's extender, there's retarder, uh, tack thickener, release agent. Actually, this was very, very interesting because the release agent, I don't know if I got any here. Blending medium. Uh, this one is, this is for liquid pigments. So um, they gave me a blue um, liquid pi pigment and then the red, yellow, black. And then this is the clear um, pigment. This is the... Kua liquid pigment blending medium. And then what I did is I got two of the bigger jars. Now you, there's two sizes of jars. There's a two ounce or there's eight ounce, I believe. I'm not too sure. Um, but 
I've been watching the woman that originally um, invented this ink doing mono prints with leaves, and it was beautiful, just beautiful. And the nice thing about this, oh, I got black and white, and oh yeah, and a a big blue one. Um, uh, ultramarine blue for some reason is getting to be hard to find in anything so if you uh, like to use that color in paints or whatever I would suggest if you find some pick it up I don't know why it's harder to find but it is Yeah, I got the blue. So, <laughs> all that said and done. Um, that's the entire line is the mag mix um, used for uh, Akua Integro only. Mix into Integro uh, Akua inks to add depth and shift the and stiffening of the ink so you can stiffen the ink and release agent is used for ghost printing high shine for the metallics uh, mono printing with uh, a pin press um, so if you're doing dry point um, uh, printing and what that is is you can take you can actually take the packaging and use a sharp point pin or a nail or something with a point and scratch on your plate and then you what you do is you roll your your ink and then wipe it off and the ink will be in those grooves that you paint uh, dug into the plastic with and then what you do is you put that uh, release agent on your plate and then put your paper on and roll it or um, use a uh, what do you call those round discs I can't think of the name of it um, and it'll actually improve how it lifts off of the off of your uh, plate and it's also great for using on your jelly plate when you're using metallics, it actually, I don't know if any of you, Baron, that's, thank you. Um, I don't know if you guys have found that a lot of times when you use a metallic paint, it tends to leave a lot behind on the plate. It doesn't lift at all. Well, when you put this uh, release agent, it lifts it up completely. It's fantastic. So, even if you just got that, if you use a lot of metallics, that would be a great thing. Now with this Akua, um, you cannot use this ink on Upo paper or anything that has a, uh, a wax um, uh, surface, type of surface, because it will stay wet. It needs a a porous absorbent surface in order to dry because it, it slowly seeps into your paper and um, that's how it dries. So I could leave it on this plate if I put something on and then all of a sudden I got called away for um, dinner or whatever. I could come back to this plate five days later and it would still be just as wet because it's a non-porous um, surface. So don't put it on anything that you have, like the Upo or the plastic craft paper, that type of thing. Um, even probably that, what's that new one, the rock paper, that might not even work. I'm not sure, but you could try it, but I don't think it would. It has to be a fairly porous paper so something that doesn't have crazy sizing on it 
I would think. Um, some papers you could probably dampen it, like um, some thick printer papers you can dampen and then put it through a rolling pin session with it and it'll lift it. But um, you don't have to use a wet paper. I know a lot of printers do use damp paper when they're printing because they, get, they lift more paint. Um, it adheres to the paper more. But um, it's affordable too. It's much um, less expensive than your expensive um, inks, oil inks that you buy in the um, art stores. And it's non-toxic and it washes up with water. So I thought we could give this a go and see. And I even took out my um, golden, what are they called? Open acrylics to see what the difference would be. Um, the white is supposed to be opaque. You can get a couple different uh, whites. This one is uh, opaque white. So I thought that might be kind of cool. And you need very, very little, a lot smaller amount than you do with um, this. And you don't have to worry about, oh, I got to quick get my paper and all, because it's not going to dry. Now, saying that, if you wanted to um, put multi layers on, then it would be a different process. So you would have to uh, lift what you got and then put another layer over top. So you'd have to figure out where your layers are going to be. And um, it's, it's more like um, pr art printing instead of craft printing. Um, but it's a neat process and you're, you're, your um, details are much more fine, I guess you could say. So has anyone ever used any of these in their art? Just wondering if anyone's even heard of it. <laughs> uh, that link is for starter set. Oh, thanks, Kathy. You have not? Okay. That's French. Yeah, you can get an Akua pin pressed also if you want. Um... So what came with this kit is, let's see, professional printmaker, Susan Rostow, R-O-S-T-O-W. She does have a uh, YouTube, if you want to check her out, and that's the um, inventor. Uh, says it uh, delivers brilliant colors, intense blacks, and unmatched working properties. Highly pigmented, professional quality inks. And we got two ounces of the Hensa Yellow Crimson Red Carbon Black. Um, excellent for etching, mono printing, relief, and collagraph uh, printing. collage graph printing, sorry. It will not skin over in the jar or dry on the printing plate and cleans up easily with soap and water. Um, then you also got the Akua modifier transparent base, one of seven Akua modifiers. Uh, Akua uh, transparent base can be used with the Akua Integro and liquid pigment inks to alter ink transparency or viscosity. 
and can be used to create new integral or relief colors. And then we also got a one ounce of modifier blending medium. One of um, Akua blending medium can be used with Akua integral and liquid pigment inks to alter ink viscosity. Used to thin the ink to for brushwork, create wash effects as used as a resist or viscosity monoprint. Do not add water to thin Akua integral. Water will cause the ink to stiffen. Interesting. So I thought, well, this is, I haven't used this. So, and I've been wanting to use an ink. And I thought I had some speedball inks for uh, block printing, but I think I must have given them away because I don't, I can't find them. So let's put this over here. And now put that there. Take this out. If you want something a little, you know, we've all been playing with our paints and whatnot. But for me, I wanted to uh, try some different ways of doing mono prints with leaves. And why not try this? Or using a leaf as a print. I have one tube of hair. Handy Art Water Soluble Block Printing Ink in Black that I got for my masking tape elephant print. Hey, Jasper. A little different printing this time. Now, I did pull out some stencils. And I thought we could use these, try these for printing. Um, and we'll see how... how um, what type of uh, result we'll get. I do have a lot of stuff on there. It comes off fairly easily. But... I know you're gasping all those crusty bits. But this is going to be a different way of gel printing, definitely. Now, after you're, if you print some and after they're dry, you could reprint. So um, we'll see how long it takes to dry. I don't know if, I would imagine you could use a, a hair dryer to dry it on your paper. So has anyone else uh, worked with inks for mono printing or This brings me back to my school days. Um, I did a lot of mono printing on plates and lithographs and dry point. It's something you're, you do have to remember it takes time. So this is something that's not quick um, as far as making something you want to print. <laughs> But if you were to use the um, plexiglass method or a really thick packaging, you can put that see-through packaging over top of something you want to draw. 
and just draw it. Okay. What a mess. I'm sort of faster to get my BFA in printing. Oh, cool. I like printing. I think it's Well, I like detail, so that's probably why I like printing. Um, when I went to school <laughs> many moons ago, um, school was different back then because when you went to art school, everything was supplied for you. you didn't, the only thing you had to supply was... Uh, pencils and a uh, sketchbook but all the paints and uh, lithographs and canvases and cameras they were all supplied for you not that anymore All right. Ah, oh, yes, I love printing of all kinds. Back in the 90s, there was no jelly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For me, it was back in the 70s. Um, and everything changes, right? Devin, now that you asked, yes. Well, yes, I finally got thanks to Biden and my student room will now be forgiven. Oh, awesome. Wish that would happen here. <laughs> but I doubt it. I can only hope. I think it's a shame that people spend practically their whole life trying to pay off their student loans. And most of the, most of the time, the people that went to school aren't even in the area they went to school for. Not even the topic. It's crazy. All right. Now, what I'm going to, I have some, uh, this is non-treated butcher paper. Uh, there is a print shop in the old market at Detroit that does classes. You should check it out. That's a long drive, Kathy. <laughs> hmm. That's like five hours. <laughs> five hour drive one way. Hey, Lena, we're working with Akua Inc. today, and it's an um, cleanup ink with, with uh, soap and water. It's soy-based, and it does not dry on your ink plate. All right, so... I think to start, now you can, let me think. I could 
make a background first with um, a cool inks. Now you have to remember, let me think. Okay, we have this yellow here. And you have a blue and a green. Spatula. And it's thick. It's very thick. Remember, do not put water in your paint. So this is a two ounce jar. And really, probably this two ounce jar is all you need. So let's put, doesn't take much, some yellow. I'm just gonna pop this back in there. And you don't have to rush because it's not going to dry on your plate. Now, the thing about this also is that do not put thick layers on. A thick layer will not help you. It'll hinder because then it will take forever to dry. Let's clean this off. And I'll take some of this off. I'm going to make that's probably more than I need. You can just leave your jars open even and they won't dry. They won't skim like I get a, a skin over them. Then I want this is experimenting guys because I haven't done this for 45 years. I did clean my rollers. Yay! So Ah, uh, yes, the sound of ink for it to work. And lift your roller when you're using inks. See how nice it goes on? Um, I'm just going to wipe it on here. And then I'm going to take a baby wipe. I'm just going to clean off my roller. Okay, and I'm going to dry it because I don't want any ink, any uh, water on my ink. But see how the nice and smooth the ink is on the plate? It's not lifting or, um, you know, how it separates with your paint. It's not doing that. I'm just going to roll it off on some newspapers here. It is a beautiful color. Even on the newspaper, it's nice looking. Okay. 
All right, now I am going to get us some different. Let's try first. This here. And I'm just going to put it down and maybe that on there. And then I'm going to put if you have some texture plates, you could use them too. I don't know if I have any. Some bubbles. Let me get some texture stuff. Um, just to start to see how this works. I have a box somewhere in here. See how nice it is? I don't have to rush. Okay, here's a box of stuff here. That I kind of like. You don't have to you can sit and ponder about it or, you know. Some of this stuff I should have a glove on so I don't put um, yeah let's just throw it down pick it up throw it down and we'll see how it prints Okay, that, and what else we got here? Got pieces of bag. Let's see what it would do if we put it on there. It prints on there. Okay, now I'm going to take a piece of, uh, I have some rice paper here. I'm just going to pull up and see what we get. I'm going to leave the stencils on. See the bag? Look how bright and crisp that looks. So I'm going to leave that over there to dry. And then I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to put it over here. And this one, and I'm going to put it over here. And now let's just pick this up on another one so we don't have to rush.
And it picks the whole thing up. Look at that. Let's, uh, I'm going to take my roller and I'm just going to roll this, make sure I get all of that paint on there, lift it up again, and may as well just put it back down on here. And let's see what it does. Okay, so let's see, let's try and, this feels dry, so let's try it. Oh, it's gone right through, that's the real side, so let's put this on here, see what we get, just to play. Picked up everything. And there we got the leftovers. So you're still getting ghost prints, which is kind of cool. So let's put this on. See if we get anything. Yeah, we're still getting um, different bits. Could leave that. And. Let's do something on here and maybe. Use what other colors we have black also. Or I did buy some blue. So let's use this blue here to make some green. So any questions? You could probably use stamps too on it. We'll try that too. And I'm going to try some leaves. This one's really stuck on. This one's ultramarine blue, I believe. But you don't need a whole lot. Let's see if I can get that up. You want to hear that tack. This, no, that'll come up. Let's just put some over this to see if we can get anything off of this. Okay. Now, I think I want a bigger one. Let's try and Take prints. Okay. 
It was fun. Okay, so let's try it on a piece of, this is untreated butcher paper. Let's see how it comes up. The black circle one. This one, um, I got that one from Zandra. She probably know. Look at that. Look how vibrant that is and how awesome the print is. Studio light. Okay. I love that. Look at it. Okay. So let's, let's put a little bit. Let's just see if we get anything on here. Oops, sorry. Sister, I don't know why she keeps calling me when I'm <laughs> streaming. So I'm going to put it on here. See what we get. And, and there's no, it's so nice on the plate. You're not getting any um, yucky stuff. Okay. There's a little bit of color in there. Um, okay, let's put a little bit more. That and Let's do yellow, a little bit of yellow with that. So I'm going to actually get another, another one so I don't muddy up my colors. Just a bit, too. So. And the brayer. So lift when you're rolling. some plants. <laughs> See what we get. Okay, so this is um, a wild form of clover. So I'm just gonna 
lay this down like that and let's just lift that up remainder now I could have made marks in the background for this and we'll see what kind of detail we get and you saw how thin the paint was didn't you didn't need a whole lot Watch this off between, you know, in between the leaves and along the edges of the stems as you can. Okay, there's the, that's kind of cool. And then let's put a paper down. Do we put it on here or on the paper? Let's try putting it on the paper first. Let's see what we get. I'm going to use maybe a newspaper just to go over the top of it. See what kind of print we get. This is Akua. It's a printing ink and it's soy based and it's washable with soap and water, but it acts like an uh, oil ink. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Awesome. Look at the detail. That is so cool. Okay, so let's let, let that dry. Let's see what kind of print we get from this one. Hey, Flo. I like the fact that you don't have to wait very long to pull it, too. This is a game changer, guys. And I haven't had to really wait. Look at that. the detail on the leaves and I just kind of threw that on that is awesome oh I love it okay let's try a bigger leaf to see what kind of detail um let's try it in black I will just put it on here. Well, use up that ink. And
scroller. Let's see. And you can get the metallics in this stuff too. Look how beautiful that goes on. so much fun guys I'm sold <clears throat> all right this is a magnolia leaf look at the very deep veins so I'll put that down Now this could work both ways as far as um, printing. Well, let's put some of this. This is a weed. It's a viney type of weed. It keeps showing up in my garden, but some places I leave it because I like to use it for this. Um, let's put it right in there. And one right there. And what else? Let's maybe some polka dots or I don't have to rush, right? Something more. Let's try this here. Actually, I have this. These corners might be kind of cool. Let's put that down. Like that. And I'm just going to lift it. And maybe see if it not a whole lot. I think you need more of a, a plate. All right, and then a piece of paper. Let's see what kind of print we get. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Magazine poles? I don't know. Let's try it. Maybe it might be the perfect thing. You never know. You have to try things, right? See what they comes out. It's the black, so you can still see the slightest. Didn't take a lot out, but it still shows up. Now I could take. Um, another one or newspaper. If I wanted to just get rid of some of that black. And I think I'm going to pull 
that on this. So like I said, it doesn't dry on your plate. So you have lots of time to look through what you have, decide instead of, you know, we're always rushing because it's time sensitive. <laughs> this is great. It didn't it came off a bit, but not as much. Now if I do I have a relief. So it did come up a bit. Still a bunch there. So we can take that up. With another piece of paper. Or you could just wash it off with soap and water. Get quite a few light poles. Um, where did I put my? I'm just gonna wipe it off. Make sure there's no water on it afterwards. All right, so I'm going to take this off. Maybe I can use it on something. Well, let's just put it back on this. See what happens. Wow, doesn't take much just with your hand. Look at that. I still have more on there. Wow. That's so cool. So I could just leave these. I don't know if they dry on a leaf or not. <laughs> I'll just leave those for a minute. And what should we pull that with? Let's pull that on. Let's pull it on this, see what it looks like. I'm gonna put a piece of newspaper over that. Yeah, the detail's fantastic. Uh, can you put the regular acrylic paint over top and do a pull? No, because it uh, you would just roll off your Akua ink. Awesome. Now that one didn't didn't have as much, but on it. So let's see what this one. Cool. I like it. 
Now, do we have any left on there? Let's see. Now, if you were, I'll try, see, now, I'll try and see if it would work on, um, well, I don't know, if it would work on top of an acrylic. But I doubt it because there, it wouldn't be porous enough. That's what I'm thinking. Mm. Let's do it just some copy paper. Now, when you see that you're leaving behind some of this, you can put the relief um, on top and it will um, help. I don't think I have any of that though. What's that page? That thing. Um, where did I put that? Pamphlet. Oh, there it is. Let's see what they. I might have to get some. We got the two ounces of paint, one ounces of pigment modifier. And blending medium for brushwork. Let's see what said. Release agent, it's called. I might have to get some of that. Because then it would, um, if you find that you, there's some paint or ink left on your plate, maybe a re, um, the release agent would be better. So it's just a, still kind of cool looking though. Okay, so let's see if this will come up anymore. I'm going to put one right there. And piece of paper. No, they're also for dry point printing, um, lithograph. Yep, look at that. Awesome. Oh my goodness, look at, and there's still paint on it. Let's see if I can get another one. This is great. And it gives you such a nice print. Guys, even if you just got the black for doing this thing. Oh, wow. This is great. <sighs> okay. I'm sold. Definitely sold. Um, let's see. What else can we do here? I have some flowers here. cool. Maybe we'll do those in red. 
or purple maybe. Hmm. Okay. I know, and they're, they're, well, you saw how much I need to put it on. Very, very small amount. Doesn't take much. And a little bit of blue for purple. I'll probably show you how to do a dry point um, another time. It's fun. It's, it's almost like making your own um, stamps. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't separate on your plate. That's what I really like. down and we may as well let's see if I got any and I can I got bubble wrap here okay that's kind of debubbled It'll work. <laughs> okay. And then we can take Let's just see what happens when we use this over again. Or we'll, we'll use the other side. Just experiment. Now, Probably deli wrap would not work on this um, because it has that uh, wax treated in it. Now you could probably use the um, uh, excess waste from the napkins, I'm guessing. Well, that's cool. That's over top of the black. That's neat. Let's see if it goes on here. And piece of paper. Not as much as the big leaf. Probably if I had more paint on this one, it might have just a bit more. That was pretty thin. It might have um, printed up more. But let's put it on here, see what happens. So you can keep layering your 
papers with this ink. So it's very light, but it's there. I can see it. Cool. Um, let's see. I'm just going to lay this down, see if any ink comes up on the other side. Um, what else? What else? Let's do a little yellow. Smidge in the yellow. And my brayer. I'm going to wipe my brayer. Yeah, you could have two brayers if you, if you want, but it's just as easy wiping these down. And because they're um, a brayer, so they're non absorbent, they're never going to dry on there. So you don't have to worry if you forgot to. You can wash your brayer one day because it'll still be wet. Awesome. So how many of you done that? I do that all the time. Okay. So let's just put a little bit of yellow in here. Very light. Okay. We got a little bit up. What if we just put yellow? We could roll color on it. It's very transparent, so let's put hmm. What else can we do here? Let's just take a little bit of yellow is not a very um, detail color, but let's see if we just put this on with the black still on there. Maybe one of these on there. And maybe this. That. So do I think these would work on my, yes, they would work on printing blocks, definitely. Rice paper might also get an, a nice delicate pull, yes. The more absorbent your paper, the better um, detail you'll have. That's kind of cool. Got a bit of the black off of that. Still go coming up. Okay. 
And I could just put this back over top of it if I wanted to. Or what can I do? Let me think. Um, let's put it on. Oh, that's not really going to show. I want something that's going to show. Maybe we'll just pick it up on its own. Or we could do the back of this one. What's on the back of this? There, we'll just use this. that you could hardly see it on the plate look at that it's fantastic I love it oh here comes the dogs what are you guys doing down here you got out hmm? did you That's cool. I like that. Let's do another black on this or Let's do a mix. So yellow. A little bit of red. And blue. So this will probably go into a brown, depending on how much you mix it. seeds <laughs> okay it's kind of a sepia color all right so we can take some more of those leaves or let's just do this again so I'm going to take this and use this as a printing plate, basically. And then I'm just going to print it over here. Let's see if we can. Your paper is best to go over top of it when you're rubbing the plants to get a print on the plate just so that you don't move anything. Okay, get a little bit on there. Then 
I'm going to take my roller. Hmm, or should I? Yeah. Then you can just, because it never dries, you can just roll off that and do another. So let's put hmm, big leaves, I guess. Do this leaf. That one and I have some other leaves here. These um these are black lace elderberries. They're kind of cool. So let's put that one on there like that. Roll it. Because I want I'm just printing the leaf. Not necessarily getting the print on the plate. You could, but I just want. Oop. Okay, then I'm gonna take this one off. Let's put this one down here. And then I'm gonna take this. And I don't know, you could make different colors too, if you wanted to. Let's use the same paper as well. Yeah, you, I was surprised, Lena, that it doesn't take very long. Well, I guess because you're not using terribly amount of um, ink. That's cool. And I could probably put this on this i'll just leave it because I, I don't have to want i don't have to be <laughs> worried about time that's the thing i love about this um let's put it on this maybe so okay let's pull this on this. So with that little amount that I put on here, I could roll this off and use it again. So you get numerous pulls. Look at the detail. I love it. Um, eh, I'm, I'm not crazy about this one anymore. So let's just pull it on that and see what happens. So this will be three layers, I guess. Best quality for a watercolorist might be that you can now eco print on watercolor paper and work on top of it afterwards with watercolor. Yeah. Yeah, you could because it's not well. Once dry, I don't know if it moves. We'll have to test that out. Now there's still quite a bit of paint on here. Now see, see what happened? Too much ink. See how it's splurged? Because it's on top of another. So there's something to watch. Not too much ink. But let's just use this to 
soak that up. Now, if you wanted um, to change the the costity of it, you could get the uh, different mediums for that. There. Let's let's do some more black and then such a small amount you need. That's the nice thing about it. So you know you're this is gonna last for a while. I'm not gonna wipe my brayer because it's black. Brayering it till it's completely even and smooth. Okay. Um, let's see if we put some of this. Let's put it over top of this. See what happens. It's so cool. All right. We could, eh, why not? Let's just take it up with this. This is soy based. Oh, a little muddy looking because I've added a lot of colors. Let's, I'm going to wipe that off. With a baby wipe. The cleanup is so great. No crusty bits. No separating. That's what I like. And just take a paper, clean up the any water that's on there. You don't want water on it. Or newspaper would work too. Oh yeah, you wanted me to try a see if we can make a transfer. Well, um, magazine, just a minute. find something here. Want something with a fair amount of contrast. Ooh, is that? That's not bad. Look at my fingers. <laughs> oh dear. Let's see. 
I think this magazine's good for doing this. Um, just finding the right contrast. That's the tricky part. I don't know if there's a lot of uh, black and whites in this one or not. It's an old one. That one well, might work. Maybe. This one might work. That one might be good. All right, let's try it. Let's see what happens. It might not do anything, I don't know. So there's the one I'm gonna try. All right. Um, I'm going to take some of this and put it on here and have a couple different I must have a hair on my, <laughs> it's picking up the hair on my roller. We'll try a couple. All right, so this one, and I have no idea on time-wise, We're going to use this one over here and we'll see if it comes up or not. Well, don't see it. Don't think it's resisting. Could be that the paper isn't absorbent enough for it. I don't know. I'll leave it on a little bit longer. Let's see. Uh, It's got bubbles in it. I think I see a little bit, but not a lot. <coughs> Chloe. We'll lay down. Just testing out this awesome ink to see what it's capable of. Oh, it does work. Oh. <laughs> now I had bubbles in it. I'm not. Look at that. Cool. And there's still more. 
Let's see. What can I get another one? Okay, this now that's interesting. This one is not coming up and it feels dry on the plate. That's odd. So let's try and use some white. Or no, let's use some yellow. May as well. Um We'll roll it. I don't know what it's going to do. Could be. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I did. I put my dirty palette in the thing. Try and get that out. Well, it might work. It's hard to say. We'll see. Oh, I hit black on there. <laughs> And if this doesn't come up, then I'll try acrylic paint and see what happens. It's not distorting the image at all. So that's interesting. Um, I'll do it on the back of this. I always find myself rushing. <laughs> Try pull it with acrylic paint if it feels dry. Yeah, if it, this doesn't um, do it, then I'll pull it with uh, acrylic paint. That's cool, though. The detail on it. So far, no, see, it's not pulling it. Just took the paint. See, let's put acrylic paint on it. And see, what, see what happens. Some white. see what happens
that one didn't do anything. Ah, slight, 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 a little bit. Not much, though. This one came up a bit more, but not as um, the negative. <laughs> but you can just wipe it off. I hope. Or is that stained? Huh? Why would that do that? It's not supposed to dry on a plate. I still see it. Huh. I use soap and water. That's weird. Uh, I guess it maybe it stains it. I don't know. Let's see what happens if it moves at all. That's funny though. It could be stained. Or maybe something with reactive um, in the paper, maybe? That's strange. We'll see what happens. Let's try something and see what it does when I put more paint on. Okay, so let's put some more black on. Need to wipe my brayer first. I'm gonna, I think I'll just soak that one and use another brayer. Get another one out somewhere. Hand sanitizer? Yeah, maybe. I haven't got any, though, down here. Or baby oil, maybe. All 
right. Then let's see what this does while we're here. These are stamps. Yep, they work good. Stamps. Um, what else do we want to put in here? Now, I'm not going to use the acrylic pole because acrylic is non, because it won't hold the. Uh, pigment because it has to soak through. some of this edge. All right, well, let's pull that and see what happens. So we still have some tissue, or not tissue, um, just paper. <laughs> can't think of it. Now. Can't th think and do. Sanitizer. Hi, Jelly. Thanks for popping in. So 
actually, you can see it seeping in. So it really does uh, come in really thick through the paper. Cool. So I don't see the um, face at all. So it must have just stained it a bit. Maybe a reaction? I don't know. Um, let's, put, let's put a little bit more on this here. What else were we going to try? I can't remember. Anything you want me to try? May as well use it on here. to get going at Apple's office and have a great day. Thanks, Kathy, for sharing your new discovery. <laughs> You're welcome. Hey, Susan. Let's see how many we can get out of this. Quite a few. Overlapping is neat. That is really cool. Let's see. Well, let's put it on here. It's really hard to waste ink, guys. Really, really hard. I've been wondering that about I, um, Kathy. If you put two inked plates together, can you get a dendritic print? Possibly, we could try it. Um, what was I going to do with this now? Well, you could write on it with, like, take the ink away. Um, let's see what I got here. Well, I may as well use up some of these plants 
or let's let's um take this print. Okay, we'll use the back of this one for this one. So I would, you know what I'm thinking, because acrylic paint has, I don't know if it's water, but it's maybe that reacted. And it says do not put water with these inks because it'll thicken them. So I'm wondering. Cool. I love it. I, I just can't get enough of it. Let's see if this one will ink up anymore. But the ink goes so far. That's the nice thing about it. See if it'll print on here. Yep, yeah, a little bit. Let's see. Some goodness in here. get and that's what I like about this too is that you don't have to rush you can think things out you know how often you've done a jelly print and then thought oh I shouldn't have done that color or oh I should have used a different stencil um you think that the acrylic inks could be different than acrylic paint no it's still got the acrylic in it I think it's the uh, soy base that's reacting, probably. Um, well, let's put another one of these on. That and... Chloe, enough. Put this one on here. And lay down. Or you're going to have to go upstairs. have these um, stencils I made. Color. These are kind of cool because they sit up high so you don't necessarily get <laughs> so much fun playing with this stuff. Um, what do I want to pick this up with? Uh, one of these, I guess. Just to get all the goodness out. You could just do a pull of a color and then 
um, do a bunch of the detailed ones on top. this one Let's see if I can soak up any more of the black in it a little bit not much okay so let's remove these let's put them on here We'll see which is best. Um, I'm just going to use the back of this one. Imagine if you had cotton shopping totes. You could make awesome image transfers. Yes, you could. Um, this works probably on fabric just as as well because it's a um, absorbent surface now whether it's i have to find out if it's it um permanent though so that's the one thing i do not know there's that one There. I think it's cool. All right, so anything else you want me to try? Making me laugh, I've got dogs, so I know she's fine. She's playing on Kathy's heart. <laughs> yes, you know her well. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was going to try this. So this is sap green. Do you want me to try this? It looks like the picture that stained the plate is fading. Yeah, it's 
slowly. Um, do I have any big oil? Let me see. Do I have alcohol? Maybe that will work. I have citrus salt too. Just two um, or a little bit of oil. Yeah, she went back upstairs. She wasn't, I was ignoring her and she wasn't getting her way. <laughs> well, it doesn't really take some of it up, but I think it might be just the black that's doing that. Does anyone use citrusol on their plate? Just wondering. Don't want to wreck my plate. They're not cheap. It takes it off your hands pretty good. No? What do you use, uh, Sandra? Uh, I don't think it is your ink, but the ink released from the magazine. Yeah, that could very well be. And it just reacted. It's kind of like the uh, um, Pam Pastel fiasco. <laughs> that took months, months. Um, Murphy's is what you use. Yeah, I think I have some upstairs. I could try it when I um, go back upstairs. So is there anything else you, you're thinking about you want me to try while I'm got this all out? Can you hear them? They're sitting at the top of the stairs, both of them. Rubbing. Yeah, that was rubbing alcohol I used. Do you want me to try the golden open acrylics? See if how those go. I could try. Have some. Oh, the dendritic. That's right. Yeah. Okay. We will try that. Um, so, just thinking. Okay. Let's try some. Some blue. So I would imagine you need it on both plates.
it's, it does have that tendency with the roller. Try it. All right, so the trick is, I think, to pull it apart. Doesn't really do much. I think you need thicker paint. <laughs> if you have really thick paint, it would, but that's a waste of paint, really, because then it won't dry. You can't have this paint too thick. And if it had the dendritics in it, those uh, raised areas would take months to dry, <laughs> probably. Let's just do... Brighten these up. So you can make swatches of colors first on your papers if you wanted to. Or you could do probably little dabs here and there. Make some uh, backgrounds first and then come back to them later. I have some white I haven't tried yet. Just have to be careful on how much I roll so it doesn't turn brown. comes the pesters.
Let's see what we get. I shouldn't be rolling this off on some of this stuff here. Couple more of the rice paper. I'm just going to take the color up. Kathy, that was your last warning there. Chloe is just doing, going to expire if she doesn't get you. <laughs> yeah. She knows it's almost um, supper time for her. And they try to make it earlier and earlier every day. It's like torture. You think they were going to starve to death. Well, that's pretty. It's almost watercolory. It's really pretty. And like you, there is a, uh, you can use this with a brush too. So there's two backgrounds I can use. Do some more white. I never learn. Take this and wipe it before you dip in. You don't want to contaminate my thing. Let's roll this out. Experiment. done by. Torture. Okay. Okay, I got this one here. Let's throw that on.
<laughs> All right. I if that will print onto this. Let's see. A little bit, not much. All right, so then let's. What do I want? Well, let's put it on this one. More layers. I think she hears you talking and thinks she needs. <laughs> yeah. She she doesn't like being down here. Oh, too light. See, didn't really do too much. So that's interesting. But. It would lighten probably uh, colors. So, like, you know, your blacks and whites are either a tint or um, a dark color. When you add black, you darken your color, and you add the white, you lighten it. So, oh, my son went into the feed bag. <laughs> she knows the sound. Food, see, I'm not important. It's just about the food. <laughs> Something in there. So this will be the last one I do. I'll we'll see what we can do. And then, actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, some blue to this. Let's see, get a kind of a purpley color, probably. Beautiful, beautiful color. And then I'm going to take this, put that down, and lightly go over it. Like that. Uh, 
I'm going to put some over here. We'll see what we get. See if we can I'm gonna leave that. I don't have to get rid of it yet because it won't dry. <laughs> I have to keep reminding myself. All right. We have this here. So you can see a little bit of stuff from before in there. So if you want to really do, isn't that a beautiful color? Wow, you can really make some gorgeous colors. Let's see if I wanted to. I don't have to rollers somewhere. I just want to. It's just. Go over that. Cool. That is so awesome. All right. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I, I just love these paints. They're they're so vi like they said, vibrant. <laughs> That's for sure. Um let's see. What color? Put it on here. Pink with that. What do you think? Or one of the ones we had the background for. Hmm. I think I'm going to put it on this one. Let's clean my brayer. These um, roll-offs of newspaper would be nice afterwards, too. First jelly session without a dry... <laughs> exactly! I never thought of that. You're right. 
Wow. That is something, isn't it? You're right. Didn't realize that. Wow. No dryer needed. Quick. You still can, you don't have to wait. That's cool. Just keep layering. It's a little bit of different um, process, but not that difficult because there's no really no waiting for this. That is awesome. Um, So here's the clear plastic that you can use. I'm just going to put this aside for a minute and I'll show you. So what you do is find a something that a pin, big pin or Dental pick somewhere. Hmm. Oh, this will work. All right. So what you can do is you can find a book or let's see. this. Say you wanted to do some drawing. So you would scribe into this plastic this isn't the best thing. It needs a Something a little, this isn't got the best tip. Hmm. And all would work too, but I don't have it right here with me. No, I'll try to make my, the best of this, but. I'll just do a quick one. If you have a something a little bit um, sharper, that's what all you need. Ooh, that that eye is going to be <laughs> pretty scary. Okay, 
So then what you do is you take a little bit of your paint Now you can take a roller, just to roll it on right now. It will make up a, a negative, but that's, you could take a print of that, but you want um, something that you could a brush of some sort, some a stiff brush would work. Probably a here, bristle brush. Keep moving it around into those crevices. Now, there is a special cloth for removing inks without going too far into the groove. Um, I, I believe you can get it on their, their website. This makes uh, things a little easier for you. Um, if you have gauze, that will work. I'll just use a paper towel to get the, the, most of it off here. And then you just wipe. Take your paper and you can take a spoon if it's not too big or you could roll it through your um, big shot. This may not work. I moved it. No, nope, it's not working. Uh, I think it takes two. It might be too wobbly, not thick enough. Um, best to have a like a ple plexiglass. Um, is what most people do. This bowed, so I don't think it's going to work now. Let's see. Sometimes when you spray it with water, though, it works. We'll see. I think it's bowed too much. Yeah, it's bowed too much. Anyways, that's the gist of it. <laughs> Don't do what I did. <laughs> it should be a stiffer board. So plexiglass, that type of thing, or uh, a really thick piece. 
And then uh, I was pressing too much because my po the point of my uh, thing wasn't. Sharp enough. I wish I would find that thing. Just a minute. Okay. Here's an all. Let's just do. design and I'll show you hopefully this works a bit of all these blue Might work. Hard to say. Not working. Huh. I think it goes in too much. Let me see something first. See, we had plates that we did etching on. So it's different. machine hmm. I was gonna try it on this see if it if it went through the emboss or if it would nope oh I wanted to show that so bad I think it's the you need a, a really something that's not gonna it's just gonna scratch but not dent in Oh well, <laughs> I tried. A much easier way than carving stamps. Oh, Susan, must be a difficult time going through this COVID years. Being successful for everybody. It's all of this. We are, we are a house full of. Yeah. Sorry to hear your troubles. Not much you can do about it, though. It's done a real number on people. All right. Well, that failed. But 
I think these turned out really well. Let's take a look at what we did. This way. Wait, this one. It's just on black. These are stamps, stencils. This one. Some backgrounds that we can finish. Now, I would imagine you could put acrylic on top of this if you wanted to. Love this one. Nothing on the back. And I love this color. That is gorgeous color. Some prints for off the leaves. What else we got here? This one is rice paper. Another rice paper. Both sides look nice with that stuff. I love this one. That one. Now remember, if you put some on your stencils, make sure you rub them off because they'll they won't dry. So this one has. So that they still got stuff on them. You can throw them in the tub of water too. Soapy water. This one. Mm, what else? I think that was it. Yep. I think that was it. So I think that's an uh, awesome. Ink. I really do. Gorgeous. And this um, paper seems to take the, the the ink really well. That's that um, untreated white uh, butcher paper. It seems to be perfect for this. I love this one. Love that one. So, 
So I think it was a success. Definitely. Yeah, and I hardly used a, a, hardly an, anything, really. And I, I didn't try any of the uh, these. This is pure liquid pigment. And then you mix it with, um, this is a blender. So you could actually use for, um, if you want it really watered down for painting with. And then um, the Akua, this is, you add this to this to make this, basically. So if you, if you wanted to add this to red, you could. And make your own color. You can get these in different colors. They all come in different colors. And I would imagine you don't need a whole lot. Um, I strongly suggest if you're going to buy them, get the uh, oh, where is it? The starter set. Just to see if you're going to like it. Um, it's really inexpensive. I was really surprised. I think it was $35. And then if you decide you want to play with it more, you can order the colors you want. Um, and also check out uh, YouTube. Um, now, what was her name again? Uh, Susan Rostow, R-O-S-T-O-W. And she is the one that um, invented this. She has a YouTube and some really good um, tutorials about it and how to use it and printing and all sorts of stuff. The dark green with the leaves is frameable. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. I love them. I think they're I think they're an awesome. Oh, let's let's just see. Just for the heck of it. If the water moves. If it moves at all. Now let's take one that's nope. Look at that. It's permanent. Awesome. Does it wash off easily from the desk? Yeah, it does. Look. I just have to get some soap and water and but that was just with a baby wipe. See? It washes. So you could put this on fabric. Try colored pencil on top. Oh, it's it, there's no texture to this. It's amazing. Um, it's actually no. See, you can still. it's just like the paper itself it, it it's so, such a thin consistency there's no feel to it so this would be awesome for and like um they said you could use this as a medium too so you could take a red where did my thing go so a little bit of red it's 
See, it's fair. It is fairly thick. And then you just this is um, blending medium. And you just add a few drops. And just and it, it thins it so that it's a paintable consistency. So then you can just take your brush and paint with it. So and depending on how thin you want it, just add more of the medium to it. So if I wanted it even more thinner, more of a watercolor consistency, you could do that probably too. So it can be used in many, many ways. That's the nice thing about it. So whether you want it thick or thin, or even probably even more watery, it all depends on how much um, medium you put in it. But it doesn't drag it. It's almost like watercolor. And then you just wash your brush off in soapy water. Yes, they have gold and silver too. Um, that, there's a very interesting um, tutorial on that. And they say to use the um, release medium with that. Because some, uh, find, they find a lot of um, uh, um silvers, gold, anything of the metallic that's in the paint, the metallic tends to sit on the plate and only lifts part of it. So if you, when you put roll a, um, a release medium over top of it before you um, put your paper down, it lifts the whole thing. Yeah, they'll, they'll last a long time real long time I think because you hardly use anything and like I said if you were um, in the middle of a project and you had a whole bunch of paint set out on a palette that something like this not a not a um, well a painter's palette would work as long as it's got the shiny surface to it anything that's non-porous you could just leave that out for weeks and it wouldn't dry. So you don't waste your, your paint. That's what I really like about it. So there's no waste to it. They said it really taken by how opaque the yellow was in the set I got but still what was that I just got a set of oil painting inks and I and I wish I had known about these first yeah yeah that's that is the thing about the um, printing inks the oil printing inks yes you get a beautiful print but they're they're a mess to play with. They really are. That's why I like these. And they're non-toxic. Now, 
if you've got cadmium in your, then yes, you've got some toxicity then. But um, as far as the the oils and stuff like that, you don't have to worry about the smell. There's no smell to these at all. And the price is good too. Um, a whole lot cheaper. And they're easy enough to clean up. And you just wipe these up. That's the nice thing. Um, your brayers. Just put it in the sink and wash it. Um, they do, it doesn't pile up because it isn't a porous surface. It just wipes right off. So you don't have to, you know how you get your rollers and they accumulate all kinds of um, layers of it. These don't. They must be gelatin in it. It, it will never dry. No, it's a soy based. Um, they do dry only on porous subject um porous absorbent um substrates you can't use it on upo or any plastic type of surface and i suppose you probably wouldn't be able to use it on say add it to an acrylic painting or something like that now you could use it on um uh tissue paper and then put it on after it's dry on your acrylic painting. But you can't put it on wet onto an acrylic painting because it wouldn't dry. Yeah, you can paint with them too. So, yeah, soy based. So, I think they're a fantastic. And they'll never go bad. <laughs> it was another thing. They don't go bad. You can keep these for years and years and years and years and years. They don't go bad. So if you're interested in them, that's um, my <laughs> thoughts on them. And I hope it was help to you. Great for this if you if you like printing or using your stamps with them. Fantastic for that. So if you're running out of inks and you don't really want to use ink anymore, get some of this and a small jelly plate. Uh, and if anyone is interested, Jackson's Art has a PDF download user guide for them on the page for them at the bottom. Just Oh, thanks, Safia. Yeah, that's where I got mine from is um, Jackson Art. They were the cheapest for Canadians. I'm not sure what they are in the U.S. I know you can get them on Amazon. I would imagine uh, Blix would probably carry them too. Well, you're welcome. I'm glad uh, I could help. I'm always looking for cost effective things that won't go bad. <laughs> I don't want much in, in art supplies. I just <laughs> but you know it's it's very disheartening when you're painting with acrylics and you you know you pay 30 bucks for a tube of whatever and you know, 10 years, well, yeah, about 10 years down the line, they're no good. So I'll let you guys go, and I hope you uh, have a fantastic rest of the day. And for my blooming artists, I am going to have a live stream on Saturday. So I will put a um, time and a link in the uh, community page on YouTube and also in Patreon if you're a Patreon user. 
and uh, hopefully you'll uh, join me. If you spray a print with water after it's dry, will it? No, it didn't move. I tried that. Um, where was it? Well, here. Um, water. Brush. Not moving. So they're permanent once dry. And it doesn't take a very long time for it to dry. Yeah, I uh, I thought that too. I thought, oh, I'm wondering if it'd move. But nope, doesn't move. So another bonus. <laughs> yeah, I don't see anything wrong with these guys. There's no there's no uh, negativity with this one. There's nothing negative about them. I love them. Did you, Lisa? <laughs> Sorry about the enabling, but. I think you'll enjoy them. They're worth it. All right. Well, I best be going. I still hear the little munchkins upstairs. And uh, we'll see you on, for those on Blooming Artists, we'll see you on Saturday, probably around 6 o'clock Eastern is what I'm thinking. And uh, yeah, have fun with it. See you Tuesday.